Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent paper that just came out that may have solved a few mysteries but also created a few um, somewhat unnerving sort of potential situations for our galaxy. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So a few years ago, we discovered the Fermi bubbles, these unusual formations in the middle of the galaxy expanding from the center um, and creating these unusual formations that you see on the screen. These are very energetic, even today there is a lot of energy coming out of them and we didn't really know how they were formed. But um, for the longest time, scientists suspected it has something to do with a very large explosion in the middle of the Milky Way. And it was all probably caused by the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy. Sagittarius A star is the name of that black hole. This is kind of what it looks like from the same distance as Saturn is to the Sun. And this black hole today is believed to be relatively quiet. As a matter of fact, uh, we were very surprised to find out that it did have some activity a few months ago. But um, what is really interesting about it is that um, its sort of quietness, its inactivity in other words, is very important because active galaxies are not really good places for life to develop and for life to survive. And for a very long time many scientists believed that many galaxies like Andromeda, Milky Way and a few other galaxies out there are just sort of the quiet neighbors. But it turns out that approximately three and a half million years ago this was not the case. And all of this relates to a few studies I mentioned in previous videos, which kind of all connects to a bigger picture we've been building about our own galaxy. So first of all, uh, there was a very recent study I talked about on the channel where we discovered a few galaxies that suddenly became extremely active really quickly. They literally turned into quasars. You can check it out somewhere above my head. This is something we didn't expect happening and we didn't really know how to explain them. They basically had something known as a Seifer flare. They suddenly had this humongous flare that was observed from Earth and it was all probably caused by a sudden influx of material, probably dust or maybe lots and lots of stars that started falling into the black hole and creating all of this energy. When a galaxy turns into a quasar, it actually produces enough gamma rays to uh, well, destroy any life in the entire galaxy. The amount of gamma rays produced is enough to kill life on Earth, even from the distance where we are right now, within only a few decades. At least we think so. My math here might be a little bit off, I didn't really do a very thorough calculation on how long it would take to kill a life, but it would be pretty quick. On the other hand, when the scientists discovered these so-called Fermi bubbles that you see right here, they kind of started speculating, well, maybe something similar happened to the Milky Way. And maybe this is what these bubbles are. Maybe they're basically kind of like the leftovers of this extremely powerful flare that happened sometime in the past. And so a recent paper that just came out found another clue suggesting that this is exactly what happened. The paper that was published only a few days ago from when I'm um, making this video about the ionization cones in our galaxy or the so-called Fermi bubbles explains that there's another hint that our galaxy experienced a very similar um, event known as a Seifer flare a few million years ago. And the scientists behind this paper found this other clue of this event in the so-called Magellan Extreme. You might not know what Magellan Extreme is, um, but it's actually mentioned in another video that should be above my head if it's already released, and it explains to you what these streams are. In essence, they're actually formed by the Magellanic cloud galaxies that are partners of uh, the Milky Way. These are smaller galaxies that orbit around the Milky Way, and they have this trace left behind that is actually um, connected to the Milky Way as well. And so when looking at the so-called Magellanic Stream, the scientists behind this paper discovered that there's actually a sign that something disturbed it approximately three and a half million years ago, something that was coming from the direction, from the central direction of our galaxy. And the simulation that you see right here, made by James Josephides of Astro 3D, simulates what may have happened. So you can see that these really large flares, uh, these Seifer flares, affected the stream itself and we actually get to see these effects by analyzing the gas inside of them. 
In other words, the explosion from the center of the galaxy affected both the stream itself and then also the Fermi bubbles that were left as a kind of a reminder of what happened about three and a half million years ago. And I tried to recreate this in Universe Sandbox using a smaller model and here we have our Milky Way and let's see if we can actually create a very similar explosion to what we observed. And so right there you can see this huge, tremendously powerful explosion that created the uh, Fermi bubbles. And this was equivalent to roughly around 1 million supernova happening at the same time. Now that is something that is really difficult to imagine, but you can, I guess in a sense, imagine what effect this would have on nearby stars in the center of the galaxy. So here, anything within a few thousand light years would probably have a really difficult time having life. So for this reason, we believe that maybe there is actually no complex life in the central parts of the galaxy, because we don't think this was an isolated event. We actually believe that this happens sometimes, periodically. Now, it doesn't mean that we should be packing our bags and moving to another galaxy, because we obviously can't, but also because it's not something that's going to happen anytime soon. But the fact that it did happen at least once in the history of our galaxy means that we need to learn a little bit more about it, specifically because it has a chance of affecting our planet as well. Now, we don't really think that this particular um, Seifer flare affected Earth, but three and a half million years ago, human ancestors looked something like this. This is what's known as Australopithecus afarensis, and approximately three and a half million years ago, it's known to have started using stone tools. Now, it's obviously possibly a coincidence, or very likely has nothing to do with the flare itself, but at the same time, the radiation produced during these flares, and of course the uh, effects of this radiation on the genetic code of various animal life on the planet, could have been enough to kickstart a new evolutionary process and to cause major mutations in various life. So for all we know, maybe these flares somehow caused or helped humans evolve a little bit faster, and at the same time, maybe they also left various signs here on planet Earth. So one of the ways of investigating this is by actually looking at various deposits and sediments approximately three and a half million years ago trying to see if there's anything unusual happening there, specifically signs of much higher radiation that was received by our planet. Or another way of seeing this is if you were to convert our sun into pure energy and then do this 500 times, this is how much energy this particular flare released. So it's something extremely powerful, something we've never really seen in real time and something um, I think most of us think or hope we'll never see because it's an extremely powerful event that has a potential of destroying life really quickly. Now, um, one thing this of course means is that our galaxy may have been what's known as a Seifer galaxy at least once in the past. And it also very likely looked almost exactly like this. This is what's known as Centaurus A galaxy. There's a video about this somewhere above my head as well. And this is what Milky Way probably looked like three and a half million years ago. Ironically though, this galaxy is about 10 million light years away from us, so if you were to look at the Milky Way from Circinus galaxy, or actually from the Andromeda galaxy, you would probably see this right now, because obviously light takes time to travel, and so by the time it reaches this galaxy, you would very likely see a very similar image to what you're seeing here. And here you can even see that these very large astrophysical jets form what seems to be a similar shape to the Fermi bubbles that we have as a leftover of this particular event. So Centaurus A galaxy is a very good example of what may have happened to Milky Way three and a half million years ago and uh, the results we're seeing right now around our galaxy. And of course by studying this particular galaxy we'll be able to learn of the effects it may have on life on Earth but at the same time, I think it's also important to understand that right now we believe that these events are pretty rare, so we don't really have anything to worry about. Here's, by the way, what uh, this galaxy looks like in Space Engine. This is only in visual light. The previous image showed us um, both infrared and X-ray as well. And so in visual light, uh, this is probably what the Milky Way looked like about three and a half million years ago as well. Now, um, all of this is very intriguing. We definitely need more studies to try to identify possible other effects that um, this unusual flare had on nearby systems. But most importantly, we definitely need to look inside our planet Earth. We need to find out if anything happened three and a half million years ago 
that can be identified as a potential, well, I guess in some sense, I wouldn't really call it catastrophic event, but let's just say an event that may have somehow pushed evolution of life on planet Earth. At the same time, we need to discover if anything changed in the atmosphere of our planet and if it somehow affected the genes of our ancestors and at the same time possibly even change the climate on our planet. However, as of right now, it's still quite early to tell. It will probably take a few more years and a few more studies to finally figure out what may have happened three and a half million years ago and most importantly, how it affected human life, if at all, and how it affected our planet. For now, I think it's a pretty exciting discovery. It's definitely interesting to find out that, well, looks like Milky Way was not really always a, as quiet as it is today. And at the same time, it of course creates a bit of a potential worry for the future of humanity. One day, especially if we're able to survive for many generations ahead, we'll need to be ready for this. We'll need to prepare for another such flare, because it's very likely if something like this happens in the Milky Way again, we might have a lot of trouble ahead. We don't really want to find ourselves living in a galaxy that suddenly became extremely active and very energetic. But let's not rush into things. Let's find out what this is all about, what really happened here, and if it has any effect on anything in our lives. Anyway, on that note, check out other videos I mentioned in this video, and also come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Possibly even consider supporting this channel on Patreon, because it actually does help me quite a lot. And space out, and as always, bye-bye.